Okay, so quickly, just a brief background um, the Public Transport Authority. So, you don't know uh, the owner, the owner, the operator of Public Transport in WA. Um, we've got a number of brands, the most famous of which is Transperth, the first in the metro area. Um, Transregional, which includes Transest, Trans Trans Dalby, Trans Bustleton, and um, 14 regional centres, and then the Trans WA brand, which is Trans Trans um, being the owner and operator of the fixed and rolling infrastructure, we would own all the trains, own all the buses, and our depots, and 180 kilometers of the railway in the metro area. Uh, we also undertake the planning and delivery of public transport related projects, most famous of which is MetroNet at the moment, um, and that's sort of where I sit at the moment. Not within MetroNet, but doing a similar project. Back on about me, I've uh, been an engineer since I was around JB. I had two main desires for a stereotypical as an engineer. I wanted to be able to make a difference. I wanted to be able to point at something and said, I helped do that, um, make a difference in people's life. Uh, and I wanted to be able to play with the biggest, most expensive, newest, fastest uh, toys in, out there without actually having to go buy them myself. Um, and the rail industry ticked a lot of those boxes to make, um, from expensive, that's about $24 million worth of training there, uh, in terms of making a difference and making an impact. I don't know if any of you remember that incident, uh, 2014, um, where Mayor got stuck between Sterling Station and the train. Um, that's probably one of the few times where we be actually just going to be trading on a worldwide basis. Um, there you go. Uh, most expensive and the biggest, that's DBM Grace leaving from Forest Hill, which is just coming up to the record now, which is just through Red Dead Teddy's Bayswater, um, and the stadium station, which is a 300 million dollar project. Um, these projects obviously are all metro based, um, which gives me an added benefit over to my colleagues that work in the mining industry because I'm able to actually point out the things that I'm doing and people actually know what I'm talking about. <coughs> and they can go see and touch it. Um, so, why the rail industry needs people? Uh, we can't be sitting about here. Unfortunately, for the people in HR, that's turned out to be much of a spike peak. It's not really tailing down, it's still going up. Um, so there's a lot of work going on at the moment. Metro Net, that little black thing in there, uh, compared to Sydney Metro, Melbourne Metro, Cross River Rail, you name it, billions of metro going around every year. Um, we have an aging workforce as well, um, so there are a lot of people who are coming close to or are retiring. Um, so we get a lot of young people coming through, a lot of new ideas. Um, when I tell people I work on the railway, that's generally what they first think. <laughs> I can tell you I've never worked on a track like that, don't ever intend to. Um, for the PTA and a lot of other railway operators, we just use big machines. Much faster, much easier, much less uh, back in the region. Uh, same with planning and design, we don't use trackers anymore like that. We now have building information modeling. That's a cross rail station in London. Um, which is one of the world's biggest infrastructure projects where they threaded the stations in between two other underground stations, which is about half a meter away. Um, and we don't operate the railway like that anymore either. Uh, this is me now sitting at the uh, train control facility in East Perth, where we run our whole network from behind success. So we're moving much more from a, um, I guess, a, a sort of physical based thing where it's more about how fast you can how heavy you can. How can you pick up and do more complex problem solving skills, system analysis, those sort of things? Most more data set. Some of the projects we're working on. So, the real time tracking system people may be aware of. Um, we now have installed so uh, systems and software on about uh, 1400 buses that track the location of these buses in real time. The, one of the driving factors for that is that the underground bus port isn't actually big enough to operate like a normal bus port. Uh, it needs that GPS information to be able to dynamically um, allocate stairs to buses that come in 
so the buses let the bus station know what route they are and when they're coming in, and the bus station then allocates their stand for them. And we get a 50% reduction in the number of students we need. So that, that, that was the driving force for that. So the GPS that can know what that yes. is? No, 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 GPS is completely automated yeah. system. Yeah, it's 400 buses, there's no way it would all fall over. Um, and that data is then used in the transfer of that, just not just the most public aspect of this. That's the same data. Uh, the infrastructure diagnostic vehicle. Uh, this is EPA's session of train now, um, but it doesn't carry passengers. What it does is runs up and down the rail network, scanning for the health of the rail. So it runs at 130 kilometers an hour in between trains. You will see it every now and again. It is buzzing around. It scans the track profile, the overhead wires, the tunnels. Um, we're going to be using for the radio network, just goes up and down collecting data. So underneath, they've got these little Ultrasonic scanners, they scan inside the rail looking for cracks and holes at 130 k's an hour. They've got all sorts of cameras and antennas, seven antennas I think up on there for tanning, um, big lights that for the cameras to see. And the guys who used to actually physically walk up and down the railway looking for holes now sit behind the desks as an inside that's inside the train um, and monitoring the trains. They're using their experience in knowing what causes a bigger defect in the rail, they're now using it. Much and there's a third in Australia. Um, so upcoming technology projects we've got, we have the automatic train control project, um, which is a communication-based train control uh, system. Effectively, what it's going to allow is for trains to autonomously report their position and negotiate access along the railway. So it'll replace the truck duct signals you see up and down the railway. Um, if similar systems would be run completely autonomous without drivers. We will be having drivers from a safety point of view. We can't seem to keep kangaroos or cars off our freeway or railway. Um, but we make buffer demand for the longest line of such a system in the world. The 140 years of gone as well. The free Wi Fi project, we have a third of, we're installing free Wi Fi on all of our buses, trains, and stations. Stations are relatively easy, um, putting them on buses and trains, some of which go right out into the Finjara area. It's a little more complex. And tunnels and those sort of things. And the smart rider upgrade project. So where the smart rider system has uh, reached its end of life, we're now replacing it with the newer system that should be able to take mobile or credit card payments and rolling that across the whole network. So it's really going forward another 10 or 15 years. Now, the one that I'm involved in, I know much more about, uh, the radio systems replacement project. Um, probably don't have heard of the title before, but we're the project that awarded to Huawei. So that's where everyone knows us from, once I say that. Um, we're replacing the analog radio system that uh, was built in the early 90s um, with a current uh, state-of-the-art system. Um, we looked in 2013 at 2G technology, which is what Melbourne and Sydney did about the same time. Uh, we've heard our decision in 2015 to wait for LTE to catch up, uh, since you have 4G networks. They were developing a suite of standards that would do what we needed to do, but they weren't out yet. In 2016, they came out. So the world started to trigger their uh, to develop an app that we needed. Um, this is a very, a very cutting edge itself. It is, the app still is not yet fully commissioned. So there's no full working system yet in the world. Um, at the same time, we started our procurement, so we were buying something that didn't yet exist. Very scary for a railway, um, maybe not so scary in other parts of the world. Um, and there is one system, one demonstration project at the moment. Um, we're expecting to finish in 2021, which is where we need to get out of our existing spectrum. Um, so we really couldn't do it any later, and we couldn't do it any earlier. So this project is uh, one of the cutting edge projects in the FDA. I won't try to explain this, um, except to say there's a lot more, uh, a lot less simple maintenance to be done on this system and a lot more complex data-driven maintenance to be done. So in our current system, really, the maintenance is taking out a few cars, changing batteries, that sort of stuff. This is going to be a lot more people sitting down here doing trend reporting, uh, live remote condition monitoring and that sort of thing. So a lot more um, complex tasks to be here. And we're replacing everything that had a radio, had a radio will have a radio, including my job, which is 252 of those things. 
Um, so we're just building the radio network for voice to start from day one, and you know over to PTA and say, there you go, that's yours. They've got a long list of uh, desires of what they want to do with the radio network, which will be all future projects for someone else to, to, to deal with, hopefully, um, including the automated train control projects that will be coming over our radio network. Um, live onboard CCTV, we'll be beaming CCTV straight off the trains to our security center in real time, uh, which is a significant uh, improvement. Passenger information systems. So something that's interesting, they're trialing in Sydney, if you have a look here, the red, yellow, and green is actually how busy the train carriage is. They use white sensors or door counters. Um, and that's been to platforms or to somebody's app. So they can see that the front carriage or the third carriage is absolutely choppers, but the others are empty. Please move down, don't get into the full carriage. Uh, although, the fact that someone is in a full carriage next to an empty one, so maybe they won't move down, but hopefully they will. Um, shorter train PA, currently our drivers are the ones who talk to the passengers. Um, it really distracts from driving. So, non officially, hopefully, we'll get a shorter train PA system that automatically be in announcements and those sort of things to bypass the company for drivers to make those. Um, and remote condition monitoring, that's really a growth area in the rail industry. So, Internet of Things, um, basically, there are a large number of people sitting in the big right now with a long list of sensors that they want to put on the railway and have us carry that data. They have little temperature sensors here. Every now and again, when it gets really hot, you might notice that we slow the railway down and talk about the days. Um, but that's a mandra is two pieces of rail that is welded all the way down. It's a 120 kilometer piece of steel. When it gets hot, it tries to expand. If the train goes too fast around a corner, it will just spring out and just go all the way. Um, so we need to monitor the temperature of the rail constantly through summer. Um, and currently they're wired up, it would be really nice to put them on our network and know in real time how they to slow trains down. We should then talk back to this system here and do it all automatically. Ticketing, it would be nice if we didn't have to wire everything up so that would happen. And train health monitoring. So currently the, the brand new trains in Sydney report back how they're doing in terms of the wheels, the gears, the air conditioning, all that stuff. Okay, so when they turn up to the depot, they announce what they need to do. This the technician doesn't need to go through any diagnostics, it announces what it means ahead of time. These are all some of the growth areas of the long list of what people want to do that someone else needs to work out. So we may. That's my job. So I've been rolling out all the user equipment, 252 PM UCAPs, here use a electric multiple unit, um, basically for normal railcars, A and Bs. Um, diesel fleet, uh, these road vehicles are our transit. Some vehicles, our track machines, all those sort of things. This includes that MyDB and then the handheld units. And then I'm trained as well. So technicians have to be considerably upskilled and all their users as well. It's moving to a much more complicated, uh, but much more capable system. And that's it. Is there any questions? What will we notice when you've got all these things set up, particularly what house they so ticketing currently, so you've got your little smart rider post, your little green smart rider post. Um, and so there's a leadable bike shelter. So the bike shelter is legal um, on the other side of the freeway. To do that, we have to build the shelter, easy enough, get powered it. We have to underwalk under the freeway, under the railway, put our little cable in, so that we talk back to the station to do back to the rest of our system. That makes it, that's a lot more expensive than building a little shelter by itself. Um, CCTV cameras, all this sort of thing. Everything in PTA currently has to be wide, which is a considerable amount of expenditure and limits our system. Once you get rid of that limitation, things like bike shelters are easier to produce, easier to check tickets, to put up mobile posts if something breaks, all these sort of things become a lot easier. It's easier for people outside the city to go and buy it. What are some of the, I guess, the big jobs that recruitment can't build enough of? Probably have to talk to these guys a bit. But, um, so there's, there's two layers to this. One is obviously Metronet being a, a big, I guess, a job creator. Um, the other thing is our competition with the United States. Um, seems that almost every time we hire someone, 
that everyone we hire one disappears every race. Um, and then we're hiring for the UK. Um, within my project, I've got one Croatian, two Spanish, and a Greek in our project. Um, yeah, and then a couple of UK and then about um, it's a very international thing. So recruiting internationally and losing people internationally all over the city okay. an issue. Um, but as I said, we're, we're changing our, our, I guess our emphasis on things. So we're moving more from the physical side of things into these complex side of things. And that's one of the things that I think gets lost is the noises. So these rail cars are not simply weird. Yeah, there's a little bit more to it than the civil and mechanical infrastructure side of things. Um, I think we've got these trains on nearly a thousand sensors on them. Um, they're, they're complete systems. We run everything. We run the rail, we run the train, we run the system, signaling system, the electronic system. We have one of the largest data networks in the state, um, which controls everything from the fans and the tunnels, the smoke alarms. We have a billing system in the bus port, which drops, I don't know how many thousand litres in a minute. Um, and all these sort of things are all combined into one big system. And people need to be able to understand how everything comes together. That, that, that's a challenge. Thank you very much.